Hi guys, good evening. Uh, we have given spare uh, spare time for ten minutes, so the participants can join. As I can see, more participants are joining the webinar, so we'll wait till four ten. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello and good evening to all. Uh, welcome you all to this half a day session on DP100 certification. Uh, thanks for uh, taking time from your busy schedule uh, to join this webinar. I request you all to wait for more five minutes so we can go ahead and start the webinar. Thank you.
okay so we'll start the webinar good evening to one and all uh, welcome you all in this advanced role based half a day training on dp100 certification uh, your host for this webinar chaitali here so talking about our today's uh, webinar sponsor synergetics so synergetics as you all know is india's one of a kind corporate learning solution company we not only provide the certification training but also we provide group trainings on solutions such as onboarding solution then we have reskilling solution then we have certification solution so today's webinar on dp100 come, comes under this certification solution then we have certification plus add on cloud adoption solution then we have architecting solution practice playbook solution latest technology training solution and emerging technology training solution so these are the solutions which synergetic provides so today's webinar is organized and handled by atc community that is azure tech community and sponsored by synergetics and microsoft so our atc community is open to all the people who are interested in cloud technologies so we have communities such as emerging technology community created for all then we have azure tech community pune for pune ka then we have emerging technology community surat for surat people azure tech community nagpur for nagpur kids you just need to install the meetup app on your phone so you'll get the update regarding the upcoming webinars and workshop which we do i will share the links for this communities in the chat box so you all can go and follow our communities then small code of conduct please note no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording we'll share this recording on our official youtube channel for that you have to subscribe to our youtube channel i have shared the youtube channel link in the chat box as you can see then speaker for this training is mr chandrashekar deshpande he is an mct microsoft certified trainer and currently working with synergetics as practice head moving ahead agenda for this webinar as you can see participants will get an overview of the modules of dp100 certification then we are providing an exam voucher at 40% discounted rate for fundamental courses uh, we also do provide discounts on azure role based uh, certification interested participants can connect us to the given details as you can see on the screen the details has been mentioned i will share this detail in the chat box too in this half a day webinar we are providing a complimentary learning achievement batch for dp100 for that you have to follow the steps mentioned on the screen as you can see four step you have to follow and you will get a url which you have to redeem to activate the learning achievement batch for dp100 i will share the steps and the link for the same in the chat box then the next certification training it is a full day training on az400 certification the details has been mentioned as you can see it is on 10th of june from 10 am to 6 pm it is live training so i will share the registration form link for you all in the chat box so interested participants can go and register for the same then make sure you follow our social media platforms to get the daily updates regarding the webinars and workshop and more also it's a request to each and every participant make sure you submit the feedback form by the end of this webinar we will share the feedback form link in the chat box by the end of the webinar so make sure you submit the feedback form thanks to all over to you sibi sir thank you thank you chaitali chandra shikhar here and i welcome everybody 
joined here for this four hour session on uh, DPN trade. And in this session, we will try to understand the pattern they have changed since February, February, March. And uh, what are all important things? And uh, we will try to take a tool of the curriculum, eating some of the important uh, concepts um, uh, in this uh, DP and rate. I mean to say in this Azure ML service, as a Azure service. <coughs> okay, um, I want to share my screen and like to know whether my screen is reaching to focus. With the screen is reached. Yes, sir. OK. So it's a DP 100 uh, certification and it has been named as designing and implementing a data science solution on Azure. Mainly this DP 100 certification focuses on uh, machine learning and a part of uh, deep learning also. So mainly it talks about data analytics and machine learning, but I have seen that there are a few questions come on uh, deep learning also. So at least not deep knowledge of uh, deep learning, but at least what are all tools are available and what uh, uh, different tools can do specifically in the space of deep learning or specifically what kind of use cases uh, these tools can provide a solution for that one should uh, be aware of. So whole curriculum has been divided here in multiple modules. OK, so let us have a look at these modules and uh, I will also take you to the uh, place where you can see, uh, you know, this uh, 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 all these modules and this curriculum in detail. Module one talks about manage Azure resources for machine learning, and here it mainly talks about, you know, what exactly Azure machine learning uh, services, what is Azure machine learning workspace, how do you uh, deal with the data there, what are all different types of computes available. It's actually a kind of an overview of Azure machine learning service as well as Azure data bricks. It also talks about Azure data bricks. So we will take an overview of uh, both these services. Okay. We will not go in too much details of Databricks, but we will uh, take an overview of both of them, as well as we will go into little more details for Azure Machine Learning. How do we run experiments? What do you mean by experiments? What are all different models whenever we talk about machine learning? You know, model is extremely important concept. So what exactly training of the model is, what exactly testing of the model is, what we can call it the scoring of the model, evaluation of the model, you know, all these things we will see uh, in further detail in module two. Actually, there are three different approaches of development specifically in Azure ML service. And these approaches, you know, make Azure ML service different than all other machine learning development services available. So there is something called as a uh, designer. There is something called as a auto ML. You know, these are some uh, things which are in Azure ML service and not there in, in other, not there in other services. So those two things mix Azure ML service different. OK, and what exactly those things are and how these two things are making it possible for even non developers to develop the models that also we will see. Deploy and operationalize machine learning solutions that also we will see. How do we get model deployed and how do we work with it? That also we will see. So this module, module three, is a, a most weighted module and it carries uh, 35 to 40 percent of. Uh, uh, 
British, the examination. Model four talks about responsible machine learning. We will see uh, those responsible principles also. OK, so complete curriculum has been divided into these uh, four modules out of which module one, two and three are extremely important. OK, not only for the development purpose, but even for the examination purpose. Module four is easy to work with. OK, and that's why I will recommend uh, everybody to complete all the four modules. OK, before we go for actual subject, I would like to take you through uh, inputs on examination pattern as well as from where you will get all the details of the examination. This is only one examination which is based on. Objective type of questions. So all questions are MCQ based. Some of the questions are single choice and mainly there are multi choice questions. Radio buttons represent single choice question and checkboxes represent multi choice question. How that uh, portal looks like examination portal looks like that also we will see and I will recommend everybody uh, to visit that portal and practice that portal for a while, uh, portal for a while before you go for the examination. Multi choice question certainly carries a multi fold weightage. There is no negative marking. Now this is very important point that even if you attempt the wrong question, uh, wrong uh, the question wrongly, don't bother about. Okay, because uh, your mark uh, will not be deducted. There is no negative marking. Okay, so uh, recommended that don't leave any question unattempted. Try to attempt each and every question. Total pass passing square is seven hundred out of one thousand. Remember, there are no 1000 questions they will ask. They will ask 40 to 52 questions. OK, but every question will have more than one weightage, depending on the simplicity or complexity of the question, depending on the number of choices there. You know, there will be uh, 40 to 52 questions and total weightage will be of 1000. Total exam duration is of 150 minutes, including joining. 15 minutes early and stowing, uh, staying with a website to wait for a result in last 15 minutes. So actual examination time is of 120 minutes. OK, and. They may ask you to join 30 minutes early so that you know verification uh, and validation of the system, though the steps can be carried out. A case study is given. OK, remember out of 40 to 52 questions. There will be some questions like four to eight questions. Which are dedicated uh, to the case study. So they will give you one case study. And you will have to you know, based on the case study, you will have to refer to the case study and you will have to answer around four to six four to eight questions which are based on the case study. This case study will be given to you at last. So there you will see two types of examinations. One is uh, examination questions which are individual and which are not interdependent. So you will see around 35 such questions, 35 to 40 such questions. OK, so you will have to attempt these questions first. And once you submit them, remember you cannot come back to these questions you know, to review them or to change their answers. You cannot. Once you submit these questions, then you enter into second set of questions, which is case study based. And you will be shown the case study at, and you will be shown the question one by one. While reading the question, if you want to go back to the case study, that is possible. You can go back to the different pages of the case study and find the answer for the question and again attempt that question. There will be around four to eight uh, such questions which are based on the case study. But before you go for the case study, you have to be in, you have to ensure that you do not want to visit individual questions. OK, and you whenever you submit, it will be final submission. Once you finally submit them, then you go for the 
uh, case study based questions. Now here observe last point. Study of curriculum DP 900 helps a lot in the examination. So there is a uh, data processing fundamental examination. Uh, ID is a DP 900. You know, if you appear that examination first, OK, that examination is rather simple and covers basic concepts of uh, data processing. You know, that helps you here in DP and data examination also. But this does this is not a mandatory. This is not a prerequisite that you must of course to go through the DP had to DP 900. You are already working in deep data processing. OK, you can directly go for DP 100 examination. Nowadays you can appear for this examination even from the home also. Since two uh, three years I have started uh, appearing for the exam every examination from home only. So whenever you schedule this examination, at that time it does ask you it does ask you the uh, whether you want to appear uh, whether you want to appear it from home or from pro matrix center. Okay, now if you uh, select for uh, appearing from home, then it will give you time slots and you have to choose the uh, time slots available. Interestingly, whenever you decide to appear it from home, you, know, you get many choices of time slots. Pro metric centers anyway you know, are these days specifically in Mumbai. You know, they are only dedicating <clears throat> noon two hours for such examination. OK, and that's why very limited time slots are available. OK, so going for the examination from home is also very simple, easy. Must have a room completely isolated while examination is going on. You must have a room because, you know, while you go for the examination for two hours, you simply have to lock your room from inside so that nobody, nobody uh, from your family to enter into the room uh, accidentally. OK, and remember, you have to keep video of your laptop as well as video and audio system of your laptop always on. So there are people who are continuously monitoring uh, the environment around you. OK, and as well as uh, trying to listen any undue audios are coming in. OK, so you have to be extremely careful that nobody uh, to enter into the room. You must maintain complete decorum of examination without anybody around. No second laptop around. Mobile phone must be away of arm's distance. So remember before you start the examination. Uh, the people at another end will ask you to turn your laptop around and they would like to see uh, in an ambience around you. You have to show them that there is nobody around, that there is no other laptop around, that there is nobody around, nobody uh, in position to prompt you, nothing, nothing. Audio and video must be on as a uh, proctors, one from India and one from outside, uh, um, uh, continuously monitoring you all the time. The laptops must be used for examination. Laptops to be used for examination must pass all hardware tests. So whenever you are scheduling the examination, uh, you receive an email uh, inside which all do's and don'ts are written. And there you will see one hyperlink, OK, which will validate your laptop to verify whether it is suitable for the examination. So you have to click on that link. It will draw, uh, say, download one script, OK, and that script runs in your machine. And thereby that script verifies uh, whether audio is working fine, whether video is working fine, as well as whether Internet speed is enough or not. OK, so that it will check. Schedule examination at Prometric Center is also uh, a choice, but I told you, there are very uh, there are very limited choices of slots available there. Examination material is available uh, ample on the uh, Microsoft Learn websites. 
Okay, I will share these URLs with you. Okay, which will give you uh, details of the documentation as well as examination uh, preparation. This is for document. OK, this particular URL now I visit. And let me show you. OK. That URL will land me upon this page. OK, you can see. Design and implementing data science solutions on Azure. OK, uh, and uh, the explanation of the examination. Uh, has been given here. OK, we will go through it uh, soon. I am just uh, showing you uh, three parts. This whole page has been divided into the so schedule examination from here. You can schedule examination. OK, here you can mention your country. From where do you want to go for the examination? So there you can see in case if you are from India, you can select India here. OK, and it will show you. Uh, the examination cost in INR. Now remember, in case if you are getting some discount for the examination, you know, that discount will be uh, effectively uh, that discount will be you know added or de deducted from your total fees specifically whenever you go on the payment page. Okay, so here it is a total cost without a discount, but whenever you schedule examination at that time, whenever you come to the stage of paying the amount there it shows you the discounted amount okay from here you can schedule the examination okay so that is the second part of this page i will take you through the first part a little later this is second part where from where you can schedule the examination you know and here are these web pages here are the web pages now before you visit this uh, page if you sign in if you are having a Microsoft account, you please sign in. OK, in that case, what will happen that what your web pages you are visiting and reading, you know, it keeps adding points uh, to your account. OK, and uh, more the points added to your account, definitely uh, it creates. Uh, uh, what I can say, uh, you become entitled for more badges <laughs> or credits get added to your OK, but otherwise all pages are available. Your study pages are available here, so this is online learning. You know, and before you go for the examination, we'll recommend you know, to carefully go through every page, understand everything from there. OK, coming back to. Oh yeah, one more thing. Exam resources. OK, so here. More resources you can see. OK, and whenever you go for uh, these pages here, you will see different uh, uh, videos also, which also uh, help you to understand the things. OK, coming back here. I have clicked on this link. OK, and it opened me. This page. Now on this page, exam scoring and score reports. How do you uh, get the score report? Now what do you understand from the uh, score report? That is all the things explained here. How examinations are scored. On this page, I would like to bring your attention to this particular point. There is no penalty for guessing. If you choose an incorrect answer, you simply won't earn point for that question or part, no points are deducted for incorrect answer. This is very important point and before you go for the examination, without fail, please visit this page to uh, confirm whether this policy is still there. OK, in future they may change this policy, but you should not be complacent 
all the time that yes, this policy is already at place. OK, so please. Uh, ensure that there are no uh, deductions on wrong, uh, giving wrong answers. And then step by step explanation on how to how do you get uh, your score reports and other things you will see on this page. How to schedule register and schedule the examination. How do you prepare for the examination? OK, so how do you prepare for the examination? So all these steps are given there and all these steps are extremely useful, you know, uh, for everybody uh, to go through before you go for the examination. OK, now here you will see. There is one more hyperlink available. PP 100 study guide. So here I take you. Uh, on this uh, hyperlink, OK, if you go to that hyperlink, it will show you this page. Now on this page. You will see multiple very important things as far as exemption preparation uh, is concerned. There are very important hyperlinks available. OK, exam sandbox is what something which I will take you to as well as take a free practical assessment. That is something I will take you. OK. Here in the later part of this page. You will see the curriculum in much detail. So module design and prepare machine learning solutions and it's a bit age. OK, explore data and train models. Multiple modules you can see here. OK. And then to the later part of this page, you will see multiple study resources also. OK, so here hyperlink to explore more on Databricks. Explore more on machine learning, explore more on Synapse Analytics, ML flow and machine learning. So these are all important hyperlinks available in case if you visit them, that will be add on case study. Sorry, that will be add on study for the examination. OK, later part is not much important, but uh, huh. now let us come to this table. And in this table, I would like you to take to exam sandbox and take a free practical assessment also. So when I click on this exam sandbox. You know what it will do, it will take you to the portal. You know, which you must visit before going for the examination because same kind of portal you will see in the examination. And if you practice this portal once or twice before you go for the examination, you know, it will not uh, sprinkle sur surprises specifically when you go for the examination. You know, you will not uh, spend the time in searching for different options on the page. OK, so I am clicking on exam sandbox now. OK, here you see. It is the agreement that you will have to certify. OK, so copying any exam or exam related information in any form or by any means is prohibited. No. Mispresenting uh, your identity, mispresenting your country, all these things you are supposed to prohibit uh, uh, to take care of. OK. I have read and accept the terms above. Select yes to continue to the examination or no will aid the examination. So I will have to click here. OK, but before that again, couple of other things. You know, uh, in order to uh, say read uh, these uh, uh, agreement points and in order to understand import some important do's and don'ts for the examination, the initial five minutes are being given. And this is uh, uh, say. Uh, clock appearing here. Uh, so that also you would have to keep watching. OK, yes, so I am clicking on this. Yes, and then it will take me to the next page. 
and here is uh, a navigation bar to go to the next page. Yeah. So here it has to show me name of the and ID of the examination. Here it has to show me duration of the examination as 120 minutes. The number of questions here it will show you total number of questions. So the count of number of questions which will uh, appear here uh, should be total. OK, maybe around 50 out of them. You know how many questions are dedicated to case study? Maximum time for the examination, minimum score required to pass the examination. All those details are there. OK, and here is the navigation bar, so I go to the next page. Other things, exam format, timing, here is a scroll bar and you can, you know, quickly go through a couple of points here. OK, and again, after reading these points quickly, I will take you to the next page. And here it is asking me whether I am ready to start the examination. OK, and your time, uh, time will start after you click on this start exam button. OK, so now when I click here. You know, uh, my uh, clock has started. And here I will have to keep watching how much time is remaining there. OK, as I will keep attempting the questions one by one, you know, this progress bar will keep showing me you know, uh, progress of attempting the questions out of total number of questions. OK. So the next is again. Here you can click to get any kind of fail. OK, so I'm clicking on the next. Now here there are giving they are giving 10 different samples of. Different types of questions. So thereby you will come to know what type of questions uh, you may have to face in the examination. Here you will see these are radio buttons. So obviously only one answer I have to select. OK, here is a description for the uh, question and one of the answer I have to select. OK, so there are several varieties of the question type. This question type you respond to the question by selecting here is a sample. What about your favorite sound? OK, so again, you know, these the questions are very generic questions and. These are not DP 100 questions, but the pattern of the questions that will come in examination. That is what we are supposed to understand. So maybe humming sound of bird is something which I always like. So I'm selecting the word bird. OK, and thereby. Here you observe the previous and next. Both these buttons allow me to navigate across the uh, question. So even if I go to second question and if after going to the second question, I realize that I have to come back to the previous question, it is possible. So these questions are navigate uh, navigable. Which two fruits make a great snack? So maybe apple. Maybe melon. Or I would like to select for grapes. OK, now this is these are checkboxes. And one more thing you note that how many options to select? Well, that count is also given in every question. Every multi choice question. Don't select more options than whatever mentioned here. Or less number of options than whatever mentioned. Here. OK, now whenever your problem statement increases in size, and your whole problem statement cannot be accommodated in the given space, then you will see a, a scroll bar there. Clicking on the next. OK, sometimes some questions are mathematics based also, and you are not supposed to keep calculator with you uh, at the time of examination. So calculator they are already giving, and you can use this calculator for doing the calculations. OK. Clicking on the next. And here you keep observing that progress bar is advanced. It is advanced. Now this is another question 
like match the pair. OK, in this question, you observe. Again, problem statement cannot be accommodated in the given space, so there is a bar available. And here are the questions. OK, where there is a bar here too. Now here, what you have to do is that in case if you have got some option to match to this. Uh, to this word. OK, where I can see the lamp. Uh, I normally see it at a home, so I can drag a home here. So far I see at a home. That also I can drag here. OK, so far may not be seen in every office. Table I see in office. That I can track. Bookshelf, maybe at home. So here, what your choices come to my mind. You know, that I am selecting. Uh, those I am matching here. Just sit, maybe at home. Ping pong table, maybe at office. Okay. Desk chair, maybe at office. Okay. I have to drag it. Minute. Why it is not allowed? Ah. Ah. Okay, taken. Yes. So after attempting this, I'm clicking on the next again. And if I again repeat, if I want to go back, I can. One more thing you, you observe that if you want to revisit, revisit this question before final submission, you can check this box review later. So before you go for the final submission, it will give you an opportunity to navigate to those questions which you have marked to revisit. OK, so just check that box. So that it will allow you to revisit, so I'm just checking that box. OK, that is one thing. Second thing is after your submission, if you want. To leave some feedback for the question like. Words in the question. And the text given in the question is not adequate and words are confusing. If you want to give such type of remarks and feedback, you are allowed to. For that purpose, you can check this box. So I'm clicking on the text. Now this, this is a kind of a question which is a bit difficult to answer because in this question, not only you have to select appropriate uh, objectives from here, you have to order them also. So the question will definitely be from the, the question will be from the PP100 curriculum. Here it is very generic question. Which five tasks should you do in the correct order to create and sandwich? So not only you have to select the five tasks, you have to arrange them in specific order. So I don't know how to, uh, you know, create a hand hand sandwich. You know what I will do is, okay, I will just select the options here, which I find uh, good for me. Uh, place with the slice of the bread on the plate. Now they are giving four only. One, two, three, four. And here they are asking for five task. How would it be possible? Should you do in the correct order to create a ham sandwich? They are giving five, four tasks only. There seems to be some mistake in this question. So anyway, I want to give some uh, feedback for this question. So I am checking for this. OK. Now, once I have moved all these uh, steps here, if I want to arrange them in specific order, that I can do by cl uh, clicking on these buttons. Plate, uh, place the slice of bread on the top of the ham and con uh, condiments. Place the slice of the bread on the plate. If I want this to be uh, the first step, you know, I will select it and I will move it at the first place. If I want to have this uh, uh, place the slice, uh, slice of the bread on the top of ham and condiment, place ham on the top of the. Oh, OK. OK, we have to arrange them in a specific order. That's what I am leaving to you. 
OK, by clicking these buttons. You know, uh, so I'm clicking on the next. Yeah, again here you observe problem statement is uh, cannot be accommodated in this available area, so I can scroll it up or scroll down. OK, and here is the area uh, for answering. In this area for answering, I will read this text and I will then select the option from here. OK, I haven't gone through the text. I am just uh, giving a blind guess here, but in the examination, I hope you will read the question carefully and uh, attempt the question carefully. OK, settings, so maybe some settings here I will uh, select. Multiple settings I will select. OK, privilege level, yes, that also, and then I will have to click on. OK, so those options I will have to give here. Going to the next type of question. OK, here again we will have to go through the text. And you'll have to select uh, uh, the uh, appropriate options from here. OK, so I am again you know, without reading the question. I am uh, attempting the question that you will definitely not do in the examination. OK, clicking on the next. Yeah. Here again, some image has been given and it is asking me to select. Uh, some of the options here. One of the options here. Okay, clicking on the next. So it's the eighth question. And now here you will observe. You know, this question uh, seems to be different type. Okay, into the left side, you will see the details of the case study. The case study statement has been divided into multiple parts. So here you can see overview. Here you can see and you can uh, know more about the environment available. OK, here is a problem statement. OK, here are the requirements. OK, you will have to go through these points and whenever you want to go or you want to come to attempt the question. You know, here is a question statement. Which component should you recommend? Again, I repeat, I haven't gone through the question carefully, so I am simply attempting the question blindly. OK, maybe some answer I'm giving and I'm going ahead. Here some exhibit has been given and observing the exhibit, you have to attempt the question. OK, so here is an exhibit. And by looking into the exhibit, you have to read the question OK, and attempt it. Always be careful with this scroll bar. OK, you have to watch the scroll bar to read the whole question. OK, it should not happen that you are only reading the part of the question and trying to attempt uh, the, um, uh, the question on, on its part only. OK, clicking here. So the point what I want to bring to your notice about uh, the question which is based on the case study that now here it is. Yes, question which is based on the case study that whenever you are attempting it. At that time, if you want to view the part of the case study, part of the problem statement that is possible. OK, so that that anyway, you know, you can uh, revisit whenever you want. OK, one more point I would like to bring to your notice that before you come to the case study questions, all individual questions you will have to submit. OK, now that is not appearing here in this portal, but in the examination you will have to submit all the questions, individual questions before you go for the case study based question. OK. One last question I am taking you to. So there will be two submissions actually. One is the submission after you attempt all individual questions and another is the submission after you attempt all case study based. Questions. OK, 
here there are different exhibits available and based on these exhibits you know you have to attempt to this question and there may be some question they are asking here okay and should you set the path rule instead of the hatch rule that you have to attempt maybe uh, i'm giving a random answer yes finally so progress has been done so now it has to take me to uh, the area where i can review the question or review so when i click over here that this question i have marked to review okay it will take me to that question only okay and there i can review the question and in case if i want to change the answer that is possible i will uh, revisit the question and i am free to change the answer because yet we haven't done final submission okay if you want to add a comment that is also you can do from here okay but normally this comment section appears after submission okay so that you should not bother about running clock yes finally i have to click on finish okay and that will be a uh, final submission of my answers okay are you sure yes so we have submitted the questions okay now overall exam progress questions have been now i don't know why it is showing a 3 of 10 okay it will not show you that way in the examination i am clicking on the next after this then perhaps it will take you to uh case study questions and those eight six questions after you attempt then you will submit them also okay and then you will see a uh, button to come out of the examination and when you click over here okay ha huh, now here it is asking you to submit the feedback okay feedback on okay examination questions so there you can add the comments okay to every question so it will show you the question and then you can add the comment over there so that it possible but this is not mandatory if you are in hurry uh, to come out of the examination so you will click on the exit okay yes and if you blindly appear attempt the questions this is the result you are bound to get okay you could not pass the examination and score is zero okay that's great very rarely rarely it happens that i get a zero fine so examination result is shown to you immediately within next 5 minutes after you attempt as uh, after you submit the uh, submit the answers final submission of the answers not only that but it will also show you the analysis of uh, examination from which area what is your score which area you have really a strong uh, uh, hold and which area is a weak so that kind of analytics is also shown to you okay and that's all about this examination so i will recommend everybody here to go to this link and practice uh, examination web pages at least once i am clicking on end okay and thereby okay i am closing this browser so this is examination sandbox from here you will, you can go for the uh, examination portal okay, and i already have taken you to the study guide okay for preparing for the examination you know here are web pages we call it the microsoft learn web pages no available okay so whenever you are clicking over here you will keep earning the points after you completely read it you will keep earning the points and here it will keep adding 
uh, the points what you have over okay and thereby it will keep modifying the level also it will take you up in the level also okay and uh, uh, to your account you know it will keep adding the credits okay if you want to visit these modules one by one you can click on this hyperlink and there you will see explore machine learning workplace resource assets and i have gone through it so it is showing me the ticks that i have completed it okay but otherwise when you complete it you know here time uh, say uh, some time has also been given you know this is tentative time you may need more uh, time than whatever mentioned here or you may complete it with less time but here you click on the link and you keep visiting the pages one by one so here you will keep visiting the pages one by one Here is the next button. You keep navigating on these web pages, okay, and thereby you can complete the things. You can take the notes. You can note down the important points. But this curriculum, sorry, these web pages are very crucial you know, for uh, covering the uh, curriculum of the examination. Very important for covering the curriculum of the examination. OK. So just let me just check whether I have got some question on this. Any question regarding? Preparing for the examination, scheduling the examination, appearing for the examination, please go ahead. OK, it seems there are no questions. You can keep posting your questions. OK, so now let me come to. Uh, some of the important points regarding the Azure ML surface. That is one thing. Second important thing is. After we take a tour to Azure ML service, I will take you through some of the probable questions or similar type of question that normally may be asked in the examination. So thereby you will get a sense of. The level of the preparation that you will have to do for the examination. OK, and the kind of the uh, questions which may are which may be asked in the examination. Similar type of questions which may be asked in the examination. <laughs> Just this is zero, this is not. OK. So designing data ingestion strategy. It means you will have to decide from where you will get the data. 
and what operations you need to do on the data to make it ready for uh, machine learning processing. Remember, there are multiple steps to be carried out as a part of the data science. In which, OK, the very first step is to identify the data sources. Also to know more to know more about the data. You know in what format you have the data. OK, and what is the quality of the data? So for that purpose, identify the data sources. From where you can get the data. So there are you know, data sources like uh, Azure Blob Storage, Azure Data Lake Store. If it is a structured data, you most probably, uh, most probably will get it from databases, relational database management systems. OK, whenever you are getting semi-structured data, which is normally you know, uh, from block storage or a data lake store, you, know, you have to understand the format of the data. Here you observe. There are different data formats available. So you might have heard about ESP, comma separated values format, tab separated values format, JSON format, Parkway format, Avro format, <clears throat> ORC format. There are multiple formats available. Different systems create the data in the different formats. And there are valid reasons for having that data uh, in that format. Like CSV format is a text format. JSON format is a text format. But Parkway and ORC format, those are binary formats. But those are mainly columnar formats. So Parkway and uh, ORC formats are mostly suitable for uh, getting the data into analytics. OK, and they give you really good performance whenever you are you know, trying to do some analytics on that data. So you have to understand the data formats. OK, because for different data formats, you know, there are different ways to ingest the data. Then you have to. Uh, identify what are all different transformations you need to apply on the data. So here you observe. You might have got five columns out of which only four columns are relevant for your work. So you may have to drop some column. So here temperature, time, date and machine device ID is being dropped. So this is one of the transformations, but otherwise there are n number of transformations which you may have to apply on the data to make it ready for further processing. OK. How to serve the data to machine learning workloads? So here you may get data from different data sources. OK, and then separate computes from storages. One of the benefits of the cloud is the ability to scale compute up or down according to your demand. So scale up and scale down. So what are all different computes in machine learning? That also we will see. OK, but these are two important things which we have to take care while working on the data in the machine learning service. OK, uh, from where we will receive the data and which compute should we use you know, to process that data. Remember. Based on the size of the data. Based on based on the transformations which we want to apply on the data, we have to decide which compute to use. Whether one single machine uh, is uh, sufficient or we need a cluster of the machines you know, to increase the speed of the processing. Okay, so. Compute. Ah, here you see. Steps given for the data ingestion. So you may be receiving raw data from the source. So your data may be coming from some other system or from IoT devices. Here they are. Copy and transform the data to the Synapse Analytics. Here you will ingest that data into Synapse Analytics. Now Synapse Analytics is a uh, uh, 
say what we will uh, uh, call it as it is a relational database management system, but it is data warehouse. It is not database system, it is data warehouse system. In database, only structured data is the processed. But this synapse analytics allows you to process structured as well as un sorry, semi structured data. So there in synapse analytics, you can process CSV, JSON, Parkway, ORC, so different types of data. Okay. So once you process the data over there, once you identify uh, the cleaning steps to be applied on the data, okay, thereby your whole cleaned data, transformed data, you will move to the storage account. And here, store the prepared data onto the storage account. Now here, whenever you are applying this uh, data processing, here in Synapse Analytics, there are two approaches to apply. I will say rather three approaches. One, you can you know do data processing using SQL. That is possible. Okay, your structured data can be accessed and can be you know transformed using SQL. Besides that, there are there are two more arrange arrangements. If you want to do rigorous analytics on the data as a part of data preparation, you know, there is a Spark engine inside, it. and you can apply rigorous analytics using Spark engine also. But in a Spark engine, you know you have to apply transformation using some programming language. So Spark supports multiple programming languages, so Python and uh, Scala, other programming languages are also supported over there. But if you are not from development background, if you are from maybe database background, and if you want to do uh, transformation and data cleaning. You know, so there is a codeless approach here, which is similar to as your data factory approach. There is a codeless approach here. They are calling it as a synapse pipeline. So synapse pipeline is has been designed on the line of Azure data factory, and it offers you codeless approach. So without writing a single line code, you can do all types of data cleaning and transformation over. OK, so it is very effective tool to improve the quality of the data. And finally, the quality data you have to push to block storage. And once you push it to block storage, now that data becomes ready to pull into ML service. Pull into ML service and on ML service, then you will apply train and modeling. So those are the important steps. OK, I will go back to ML service now. And I know everybody here is already aware of how to create this ML service, so I will not spend the time in showing you how to create the ML service. Here is my ML service and workspace already created. Okay, so thereby I am taking it to you. Okay. Now ML service is a SaaS type of solution. SaaS type of solution means it offers you a suit, complete suit of, uh, you know, uh, creating machine learning models. Okay, so it has its own studio also. So I am clicking on launch studio and it will take me to the studio here. There are many shortcuts available here. For example, compute and other things okay and uh, this view they have changed a little bit okay and these are the list of the web pages or act activities you have done recently okay and from here you can do you can work with the compute instances also okay so first of all let us have a look at these options again i will just do a little bit fast forward assuming that 
you already have worked at maybe at a basic level with this as your ML service workplace. OK, here you observe compute. And here you will see four types of computes. Compute instance, which provides you single node. Single node. OK, and this instance basically is for doing development. So this compute instance, you know, you can connect to uh, on premise VS code. You can connect to Jupyter or you can connect to Jupyter lab also. OK, and this is basically for doing the development. OK, here I have selected. We have many choices of machine sizes. OK, I have selected uh, the cheapest machine there. OK, compute cluster. Compute cluster means. You know, uh, I have to ask it to create a cluster. Let me just check. Have I received any message? Can you please let us know what are all input needs? OK. OK. So uh, let me do one thing. Let me go to portal and let me show you uh, the steps to create machine learning workspace. So here I am going to. Uh, the dashboard. OK, and here is a resource group inside this resource group. Let me ask it to create. A machine learning service. So I have clicked on create. OK, and here I have to search for machine learning. Machine learning as your machine learning. So thereby I am selecting. OK, here is that option to create a workspace. One more thing would like to bring to your notice here as we are already there. Okay. Uh, create. Machine learning. Azure machine learning. Azure machine learning. Here you observe. Data science virtual machine Ubuntu, data science virtual machine Windows. So let me take an opportunity as that option is already appearing in front of us that they are giving me ready virtual machines you know, on which I can do uh, tasks of virtual, a uh, task of data science. So on these machines, bare minimum tools that are needed for doing a data uh, science, those are already available. Besides that, may not be installed, but installables of some of the tools are available there like PyTorch and uh, TensorFlow. So the installables are also available. OK, so whenever you are doing uh, uh, data science, OK, you have to first of all decide whether you will uh, do uh, data science or whether you need CPUs or GPUs. So there are you know uh, machines available with ready GPUs also. OK, the point what I want to bring to your notice is that. You know in data science. Such type of virtual machines are also very uh, useful. OK, for uh, processing data science workload. OK, I'm going with Azure machine learning here. When I click on create. Resource group inside which I want to create the service. Okay. Workspace name. What name do I want to give to the workspace? Now, what do you mean by workspace? So workspace actually is a. Now it must be unique within your resource group. Workspace actually is a. Uh, what I will say is an environment where your all business assets are maintained. And from where you can. You know, administrate. And govern these business assets. To whom to make which asset available to whom to uh, give which kind of privileges to work with that asset that also we can uh, you know, administrate um, through the workplace. OK, so here it is asking me to submit a name. Of the workspace the region in which I want to create it. Now, in order to store the assets, definitely workspace needs a storage also. Okay, by 
by the way, what kind of assets? So whenever we are doing the development, assets may be compute profiles. OK, what kind of compute we are we want to create? We may not start to compute, but at least you know, compute uh, can be configured. So compute profiles are there, data stores are there, data sets are there, notebooks are there, experiments are there. You know, the multiple business assets are created as a part of, you know, uh, your development process, machine learning development process. Okay, I have got some another message. Let me just get Jupyter notebook. Uh, yes, means in workspace, one of the aspect is Jupyter notebook. Yes, yes. Yes, Ganesh, it is as per. Reset. Is the learning path updated? Yes. Yes, it has been updated. Huh. OK, so one of the aspect in the workspace is development. OK, there are other aspects also. Like, you know, you will do the development, you will test your development on the compute. So compute also uh, part of the workspace. Then you will run your uh, development. OK, and there you will have to have a runtime environment. You know to make it ready so that environment is also a part of the workspace. Then every run and uh, telemetry of your uh, running that is also part of your. Uh, uh, workspace, OK, so there are multiple things in uh, workspace. OK, so Jupyter notebook is. A kind of an SDK they are making available there, which is just one part of whole workspace. Okay. But otherwise workspace is very broad uh, concept. OK, so storage account. Key vault all secrets are maintained here. OK, and uh, uh, keys to access the storage account and keys to access all other. Uh, um, uh, say data sources and data uh, strings so that can be uh, those secrets can be maintained on the key vault. Application inside whenever your models are running inside the machine inside the cluster, you know, in, and in case if you want to monitor their execution, you know, that can be done through application inside container registry in the production. You may want to make your. Uh, models available on the containers OK to scale them better. OK, uh, so container registry. Again, I have got some questions. Uh, yes. Uh, OK, so those inputs you will give here. In case if you need to create storage account new, that is fine. But otherwise, in case if it is already existing, that also can be chosen from here. Networking. Advanced. OK, not any uh, important thing specifically uh, in the learning phase to set here in networking and advanced. OK, and finally then you will click on review and create. So those are the inputs you have to give while creating this service. And once you create this service, you know in your resource group, you will see that service entry shown here like this. OK, and whenever you click on that service. This is an overview page of the service. In this overview page. The name of the resource group and other things you will see. OK, and here are different URL. This is URL to the studio. OK, and you can also go to the studio by clicking on this button. And other things you can see here. Networking and properties also can be set from here. Whenever you click on launch studio. You know thereby then it will take you to this page. So here this page is a studio as your ML uh, service studio. Yes, again, some question I have. 
वन टू वन लर्निंग लिंक टू ऑल द सब टॉपिक्स लिस्टेड अंदर एग्जाम ऑब्जेक्टिव वन टू वन लर्निंग लिंक नो आई थिंक यू विल हार्डली गेट वन टू वन लर्निंग लिंक ओके बट एम एस लर्न वॉट ए आर गिविंग यू नो इज मोस्टली मैप्ड विद पॉइंट इन दिकुलम एग्जाम ऑब्जेक्ट मोस्टली मैप may not be 100% exactly mapped but it is mostly mapped hello ganesh that ms learn has been updated as per the curriculum uh, changes they have done on march 14 okay so be assured about it. thing else i have got now okay but it is still showing <clears throat> okay compute cluster whenever you go for this you know it will ask me the minimum number of machines to be created maximum upper cap what will be the upper cap while you know, scaling up the uh, cluster size you know, that also it will ask okay now this compute cluster can be selected in uh, two uh, probable scenarios that whenever you have large workload to process okay you can submit it to compute cluster okay for processing and whenever designer specifically whenever you want to go for auto ml or azure ml service designer you know there are lots of uh, you know processing happens okay and then uh, doing all the processing on single machine is a time taking okay there if you uh, go with a compute cluster you know you will experience faster execution okay so in those scenarios you can go with this whenever you create a model and now you want to deploy the model for the purpose of the production that you can do on this kubernetes cluster so kubernetes cluster uh, is basically for two purposes that whenever you want to test your model environment okay something uh, on the environment which is similar to production there you can use kubernetes cluster or whenever you want to deploy or you want to have this kubernetes cluster as a production environment there also okay and there also you can do uh, production level deployment attached compute means the computes which are out of the scope of out of the list of the computes available inside azure ml server so here in through the attached compute you can bring the compute of hd inside you can bring your own compute you have created through the cluster of the virtual machines you can bring the compute that you might have created in azure data bricks okay so those computes you can bring uh, here for the purpose of the development yes so that's all about the different computes available and now let us have a look at three types of approaches development approaches uh you can see here notebook automated ml and design in which scenario which approach to use that also we will have a quick look at okay but it is giving me the sense that there are some questions sorry i seem to be having audio issues i will connect back from the different system in some time okay okay so first of all let us have a look at automated ml i will briefly explain you what exactly it is then we will see something more about designer and then finally i will take you to the notebooks now here you observe in this order first is auto ml then designer and then notebooks automated ml takes very less time very less time to create a model for you very less time because in automated ml 
you simply have to submit to it the data source and maybe some parameters regarding what type of model do you want, whether it is regression, classification, time series, or image processing, that you have to uh, submit to it. Okay, and then what it does, taking all these inputs from you, it starts creating a number of models for you. And not only that, but it will show you the models in the descending order of their performance. So highest performing model is always shown at the top. And you haven't written even a single code. Okay, still it is identifying the best performing model for you. So this is GUI tool through which you will simply do some inputs to it. Okay, and it will give you best performance. Now here you may ask me that in case if it is automatically doing all these things, why other options are given? So in case if you are not from development background, in case if you want to create a model very quickly within the span of one or one or two hours, you know, going with automated ML is the best option. Why people no, may not prefer this option all the time? The reason for people not preferring this option all the time is more is the automation, less is a less is your control, less is the customization that you want to introduce there. And if you want to introduce your own customization there, then automated ML is not a good option to go with. Okay, but if you are not from development background and still you want to identify best performing model in very short span of time, automated ML is the best option to go to. Designer, this is again a GUI to codeless approach to create the models. Okay, so in designer, there are many options available and you have to create a pipeline, a designer pipeline. Okay, uh, and thereby you uh, you must be aware of what are all steps you need to apply there, okay? And those the steps you will have to apply, so it gives you opportunity to apply some uh, customization over there, okay? So designer is also next good option, and again it is codeless approach, okay? But it may take some time for you to identify best performing model, and finally the notebooks. Notebooks allows you any kind of customization, whatever you want to do, subject to, you must be coming from the development back. As of now, they are allowing the Python development here. Okay, Python, not the PySpark. I repeat again, Python, not PySpark. Why I'm referring to PySpark? Because otherwise you might have seen machine learning operations being done on Databricks or Park Engine using PySpark. Here they are allowing me to do similar thing using Python. Okay, so highest customization, highest development skills, okay, are needed for notebook development. So first of all, let me take you to the tour of automated ML. Here it is. Let me again check whether I have received some questions because here. Just a minute, let me clear it up. Okay. Yes, now I, I will not be getting a sense that somebody might have asked the question. Here also there are links available uh, towards the documentation. Those also you can refer to get more and more information about auto ML or automated ML. Okay, I want to create a new auto uh, automated ML job. So from here I can create it. Now in order to create automated ML job, again there are two approaches. For creating automated ML job, you know this is a UI approach available and there is a 
code approach also available. Through the code approach, it allows me to, uh, you know, uh, select the uh, hyperparameter, set of hyperparameters to submit. Okay, so I get more, uh, little bit more control if I go through the code approach. But this is UI approach. In this UI approach, in, I will have to select which data set I want to go with. So I may be going with uh, data set diabetics. Okay, I have recently created it. So I may be going with this one. Yes, speaking on the next. What are all other data sets available? No, other data sets are pretty old. And I don't know whether they exist or not. Okay, this is most probably existing. Clicking on the next. Here are the steps given. Okay, and finally, then it will start validating the and testing. But one thing let me do. Okay, I will not start the compute here and I will not show you how it is running. I am leaving up to you to uh, try with this. Okay, the reason is, uh, you know, compute will take a little more time to get up and ready as well as you know this uh, automated ml job will also take uh, an around 45 minutes to one hour you know to complete its uh, processing okay as we are already uh, running through paucity of the time you know uh, putting everything to run is uh, not possible in this session okay but i will take you through the steps so that it will help you, help you to follow these steps later so I have selected the data set. OK, and then here it is asking me to select the experiment name. OK, before I go ahead, let me just view the data asset to see whether you know this data set is uh, you know uh, alive or not and is able to uh, bring the data or not. So let me just verify. Yes, that data set is working fine. Now in this data set, you observe there are multiple columns available. The number of rows, maybe less number of rows. Sorry, number of rows are 768 and number of columns are 9. Out of these columns, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, outcome. Now there are two terminologies in machine learning. One is called as a, a feature columns and another is called as a label column. Label column is something on which we want to do prediction. So looking at these feature columns, pregnancy, glucose, blood uh, pressure, skin thickness, insulin, BMI, pedigree, age. Looking at these feature columns, I want to do prediction of label column. So label column is the column which we want to predict whether that person is suffering through uh, or is likely suffering through uh, uh, diabetes or not. So one means yes, higher probability, and zero means lower probability. Okay, so that's how you know uh, prediction can be done. Okay, coming back. So here I have to select experiment name. Okay, now what do you mean by experiment? So experiment basically that whenever we create a data pipeline, okay, and which we execute, you know, the environment has to hold the telemetry of the execution, okay, and that that object where this telemetry of the execution is uh, held is called an experiment. Experiment also helps us <coughs> to Compare the telemetries of more than one run times. Compare the telemetries of more than one executions. Here it is asking me the target column and the target column is outcome. It is outcome. Because we want to predict outcome. And rest of the columns will be label columns. And here it is asking me to select a compute type. And here you observe it is asking me to select a compute cluster. Compute cluster or compute instance. Okay, I have to go with the compute cluster because I already told you that it has to do very rigorous process processing inside 
which will take too long time uh, if I try to do it on compute instance. OK, so that's why I will select compute cluster. And here as it hasn't found any compute cluster because I haven't created it yet. OK, so I will ask it to create a compute cluster now. So I'm clicking on plus new. OK, and thereby. You know. Uh, in which location does it want that com compute cluster to be created? What type of virtual machines are they? So I will go with the CPU. OK, and then uh, which kind of machine do we select? OK, then I'm clicking on the next. Compute name, minimum number of nodes. Minimum number of nodes, maybe two. Maximum number of nodes, maybe. I'm going with the two nodes only. OK, in case if uh, no, the nodes are, are remaining idle, what should be the timeout to cut down the size of the cluster? OK, that kind of information I will have to submit here. That kind of information I will have to submit here. OK, here it is asking me for the compute name and maybe some compute name I am giving. Clicking on the next screen. So it will take some time to create the compute cluster. I wanted to avoid this time ticking. OK, but anyway, now it has started, so let us wait for it to complete. Compute clustering. Okay, and until I unless it is completely created, it will not allow me to go back also. OK, so I will have to wait until it completes it. What are all other things? Uh, it can make possible in this automate, uh, uh, automated class, uh, the automated ML. Here it allows me a uh, feature engineering also. OK. Automatically does some part of feature engineering. OK, but it allows me to select the columns. OK, which column we want to go ahead with. OK, that also uh, it allows me to do. OK, and finally, it, uh, sorry, it also allows me to select uh, uh, what kind of uh, ML algorithm you want to select? Is it regression, classification, or any other type? So that is also another choice. What it will give. In case if it is the classification, you know, then that selection of what kind of uh, uh, means on what uh, kind of uh, uh, you know parameter do you want to compare the performance? So that parameter I will have to give. So there are multiple parameters like recall. Means I am talking about a classification. So multiple parameters like recall, AUC, and then comes uh, precision. Okay. So there are multiple uh, F1 score. There are multiple parameters based on which I may have to do uh, comparison among uh, the different models. What it has identified to identify the best performing model. OK, so multiple such choices I will have to give and thereafter when it starts working on it, you know, it may take half an hour or so, sometimes even one hour also. Uh, one more selection I will have to give that termination policy. When should it terminate identifying newer and newer models? OK, so I think it has provisioned it. I am clicking on the next. And here it is asking me, you know, which kind of model. So just observe the uh, selections here. The uh, natural language processing is recently what they have added. OK, but otherwise in ML, uh, computer vision, time series forecasting, regression, classification, these are all available. So I uh, decide to go with the classification because in my label column, there you have seen the values like 0 and 1. So it has recognized that this is a kind of a classification uh, model, a classification algorithm. View additional configuration setting and view featureization setting. So additional configuration setting, okay, primary matrix, and here you see accuracy, precision, okay, AUC weighted. Means uh, in case if it has to compare 
multiple models to identify which one is the best performing model. So what criteria should it uh, apply? Okay, so I may be selecting for accuracy. No, best model explanation. Best model explanation means whenever that model is uh, making some decision, you know, uh, so multiple feature columns are contributing into the final decision of the label column, you know, with a different gravity. Some columns are contributing more, some columns are contributing less in making the decision. So which column is contributing how much in making the decision, you know, those things I can come to know through the explanation. Okay, which models I do not want it to work with. So here is a list of the classification models. And if I want it to drop some model, okay, if I want to block some model, that also I can do from here. So I may be asking it to drop KNN, not KNN, SVM, new bias, okay, and SJD. These four models I want it to drop. I mean to say block. Okay, additional classification setting. Positive class label. What name should be given to the class? Sorry, label column. So actually, the name what they have say they have given is the outcome. Okay, to that. Okay, I may want to change the uh, name. So if I want to change that name, I can mention that here. Exit criteria. When do you want it to stop? Do you want it to stop after working a number of hours, or do you want it to stop after reaching to specific threshold? Like if accuracy goes beyond maybe 80%, should do you want it to stop? Okay, so that also the stopping criteria you can give. Okay, training job time, I may be giving it as a 0 0.50, so half a number. Okay, and uh, matrix threshold, I may be giving as a 0 0.8. So the moment it goes beyond 80%, it should stop. Uh, in between 0 and 1, yes. Concurrency. So maximum concurrent iterations 2 because we already have selected size of the cluster as 2. So I'm clicking on the save. View featureization setting. Feature selection identifies action performed on the data asset to prepare data for training. This will not impact input data needed for inferencing. Uh, if columns are excluded from training, the executed excluded columns will still be required as input for inferencing on the model. Okay, so in case if you want to drop some columns, you can. And here in this list, you will see uh, label column is not appearing because this is a uh, topic of featureization. And okay, you can unselect uh, the column which you do drop from the list. Okay, and Yes, so that's finally I'm clicking on the save and then finally uh, I may click on the next to uh, for, uh, for the hyper uh, parameter configuration. Validation type. Okay, key fold cross validation, train validation split. Normally we prefer going with this. Okay, there is one in case if you are from machine learning background, you may be aware that uh, valid train validation split may be leading to overfitting uh, in the machine learning model. Issue of overfitting in the machine learning model, and then in case if uh, it's an issue of overfitting, you may decide to go with the K-fold cross validation. Nothing comes free, so train validation split takes a less time, but K-fold cross validation takes a longer time. Okay, so I go with percentage validation of the data. Okay, those things also you can submit. And finally, then I'm clicking on finish and then it will start creating the models. Clicking on finish. And then I will have to wait until it, you know, start identifying the models. Okay. Doing the comparison 
among the different uh, uh, performance parameters of the model and showing uh, the best performing model model at any point of time at the top of the list. OK, so it has started running. It has started running. Arranging the setup. Hyperlink to go to the database, uh, sorry, data set. Hyperlink to go to the compute target. So different hyperlinks are also available here. In case if you have identified some best performing model, that also can be registered from here. Comparison preview can be seen from here. And the list of the models can be seen from here. So I am clicking on the models. OK, nothing may be appearing in this list because it is still the first, uh, the setting up the runtime environment. So let it set the runtime environment. And when then it start creating, identifying the models, then perhaps it will show me the model list here in, uh, in, uh, under this tab. Notifications. <laughs> Running featureization. So now it is it has started working on the data. I will take one five minutes break, maybe right at a uh, after it has started ident identifying the models, so that whenever we will come back from the model, come back from the break, it will at least show me some of the models already created. <laughs> <clears throat> it is still running uh, featureization. Here it has to show me the list of the models. It has yet to identify the models. And different uh, outputs and logs can be seen from here. Okay, multiple options are there. Now it has started training the first model. Okay, now if I go to the list of the models, you know, it will show me the first entry soon, maybe in the next half or one minute. <laughs> Audit training. Does it still identify the first model? <laughs> because of the continuous peaking and now it has started identifying the models okay and observe here this model is appearing at the top because its accuracy is more than the next model so always remember the best performing model it will keep showing me at the top okay Again here, uh, this is the uh, best performing model till to this time. Uh, OK, and if I click on this model, you know, it will show me other details of that model. From here, I can deploy that model if I want. I can download that model as a pickle file into my local machine. OK, I can see the explanation of the model. I can see testing of the model. 
If I want to register the model, I can do it from here. Now, a brief word on what do you mean by registration and what do you mean by deployment? See, whenever you create a model, okay, actually see this model is nothing but a Python object. It is in memory object of Python language. Now, this model, okay, can be stored on the disk for future use if I serialize it in pickle file. Pickle file. Now, converting it into pickle file can, you know, uh, is a, uh, it's a way to, you know, utilize it in future for anywhere else. Okay. Now, if I register this pickle file, in one universal model registry service, then what will be the benefit that in one part of this world, a developer may create this model or a deployer which is existing in the another part of the world, okay, and that deployer will get that model from the model registry. So making this model available universally, making this model available to other team members, you know, that can be made possible through model registry. There is one more benefit I get for registering the model on the model registry, and it is versioning. Whenever I register the same model second time, automatically that model, second model is given the higher version. And thereby, you know, uh, by default, it will always give you the latest version of the model by default means old version of the model is available to access. But by default, if you try to get a uh, model, it will always give you the latest model of the latest version. OK, and then you can use that model for the deployment purpose. The deployment means making that model, model uh, available in the production. There, then you will have to deploy that model. So you may deploy that model on your own platform. You may deploy it on Azure services, container uh, uh, services or Kubernetes services. There also you can deploy the model. OK, so deployment is making the model available for the production. OK, I'm going back to see further details of the model. This is overview of the models. This is job permitted ML. Okay. Here is the list of the models. Many models it has identified at this by this time. Okay, and I can ask it to Acha, it has completed it. It has completed it also because it has got the model. If you recall in the termination policy, I gave it the termination policy as if it identifies the model with a accuracy more than 80%. It should stop. And thereby it has stopped. OK, so this is one model maximum ABS scale, light GBM. Uh, this model is giving me the performance what I have expected. OK. So I think it is a time for us to take one small break. In the meantime, let me just check have I received any questions. Auto ML's main advantage is that it is able to run trial on multiple models and suggest optimal ML model. Codeless approach. Advantage is codeless approach with quick result okay but with least control on customization customization hope i have answered your question rs huh. okay so let me take one five minutes break and we will come back and resume our session by six five. Tea break.
I know tea cannot be boiled within five minutes, so I will not call the tea break. Water drink break. Water drink break. Okay, we'll resume by six zero five. Fine. I will go on the mute and I will unshare the screen in the meantime.
uh, hi guys make sure you uh, redeem the dp100 certification learning achievement batch i have shared these steps and link for it in the chat box so follow these steps and get your uh, learning achievement batch activated once the learning achievement batch uh, reflect on your profile make sure you submit the screenshot of it in the chat box i request all the participants to redeem the learning achievement batch and share the screenshot of it in the chat box thank you Hello. So come back to the second and last part of the session. I'm sharing my screen and let us resume what your our discussion was. Yes, so here we have identified or it has identified uh, this performing model for us. If I click on view explanation. So here is an explanation what it is giving. How much uh, uh, these feature parameters are contributing into uh, the decision making uh, or label uh, uh, parameter. And here we can see that the glucose level in the blood is uh, mostly contributing. The PI PMI index is second. Age also is there. Okay, diabetes pedigree is also there. So thereby it is giving me idea of uh, which parameter is contributing in the decision making. Okay. The performance also I guess. Okay. Now if this model, we want to register. Okay. So here. I can register that model, but before I go for the registration, so let me just copy this URL. And first of all, let me show you what are all list of the models already registered. OK, so that whenever we will register this model there, we will see a new name. OK, so here model registry models. And in the models here, you can see that. Uh, I can delete these models as of now. Delete from the registry. Uh, and this model, let me also delete. OK. Yes. And now let me register this model here. OK, I'm, let me ask it to register the model. The model type it is asking me. You know, depending on the standards. 
you know, one of the model type I will have to select. OK, job output. And then I am clicking on the next. Name of the model. So uh, model diabetes. Prediction. Version maybe one. Clicking on the next. And finally, I am asking it to register the model. OK, and remember. Now in this list, it it has to show me that model has been registered. Okay. It will take little more time for the model registry. Or the registered model as incremental version. OK, it will have to show me that model here. That model, uh, maybe it will take a little more time to show it to me. OK, let me just click on this refresh to. No, not yet. Yes, it has brought that model here. That model is appearing. OK. So what do you mean by model registry? That the pickle file. And part to the pickle file, what it has registered here. OK, and whoever will be given privilege to pick up this pickle file from this model registry, uh, he can get this pickle. File. OK, the next what I want to show to you is about. Uh, deployment. So from here I can do the deployment. So deploy the model using real time endpoint and deploy the model to the web service. OK, I go with a real time endpoint. OK, now here you try to understand that we are deploying the model for the production purpose. And for deploying the model for the production purpose, you know, it is not possible in the cluster. I will have to deploy it in the Kubernetes environment. OK, so. Again, what kind of virtual machine should it go with? Instance count. Deployment name. Here you observe this sentence. Scoring script and environment are auto generated for you. Now this is very important sentence. Scoring script. OK, and environment. So what do you mean by environment here that this is a Python model? This is as of now in the registry, this model is existing as a pickle file. So in the deployment environment, in the Python environment, it will have to deserialize this pickle file to create that model object as a Python object in the Python virtual machine. It will have to create that model from pickle file into Python virtual machine as Python object. OK, that is one thing what it will have to do. Another thing is to this model, what it will deploy in the Python environment, it will have to create a rest endpoints. So it will have to wrap that model inside. Rest environment and there should be. Uh, you know, rest endpoint created to access this model. So customer to access this model through the rest endpoints. So here, what do you mean by this? Script, scoring script. The scoring script is a Python code. You know which is meant to uh, create the rest endpoint. OK, so. Python environment and scoring script will be auto generated for you. So, Environment refers to the uh, maybe Python environment wherein you know, scikit-learn like the library is uh, pandas like library is maybe installed. OK, that is one thing and a scoring script is. Uh, you know, a, a Python script uh, which will provide the rest endpoints to access. Uh, the model prediction to the end user by the end user. OK, endpoint new. Endpoint name, deployment name, 
OK, and I am clicking on. Deploy. And then what it is going to do is it will start one instance count here. OK, and then it will start deployment. OK, and thereby then we can test the model also and we can verify whether it is working up to our expectations or not. Registered section model, model deployment is successfully triggered. OK, so now for that purpose, let me go to the endpoints. OK, it will have to start showing the endpoints here. OK, here is the endpoint. What it will start working. OK, so now your model provisioning is. Uh, happening here. OK, so provisioning state, it will keep changing the states of the provisioning and then that model we can get. We can test we can. You know, uh, it will give me the script also. Uh, JavaScript, sorry, JavaScript. No, sorry, JScript. script. OK, JavaScript, it will show me Python script. It will show me R script so that, you know, in different kinds of applications. If I simply have to copy paste that script and that application you using that script can interact with the model. So now here it is going to take a little bit more time. Provisioning state succeeded. I think. Deployment step transitioning. So provisioning of that one node has been done. Provisioning of the one node for the production environment has been done. And now it has started transitioning. Uh, I mean to say creating the environment in that uh, node. OK, and then thereby uh, thereafter it will start deployment of the model. And once it completes the deployment of the model, here also I will see some additional tags using those tags I can perform testing of the model. Okay, so as of now it is transition. Transitioning state indicates that the service is in progress of the deployment. Yes, similar kind of steps. But in further details we will have to follow whenever you go with a designer. OK, but before I move ahead, let me show one more script to you on automated ML. Let me show that script to you on automated ML. OK, so from here, let me try to show you. Let me not change this window. Uh, OK, so I go to the notebook. Just a minute. But I do not want to. Huh. Yes. Automated machine learning can be made possible through uh, code also. And here is the code. We'll quickly explain you the code. Subscription ID to be submitted here. These are Python variables what I am creating. Resource group name and a workplace name what I am creating here. OK, and ML client. 
ML client is a Python object you know, to which if I create his information, his ML client is a kind of a, uh, you know, interface for me to work with a workspace and to work with a, all artifacts in the workspace. So ML client is a single point of connect for me to work with every component present in the workspace. Okay. So there you will observe. Hereby I am asking you to create the data set. OK, if you recall in uh, auto ML, we configured the data set at the beginning. OK, and then here are the steps to follow. OK, uh, to create automation job. So auto ML classification. OK, we will have a close look to it if time permits us. OK, but otherwise in brief I can show to you. OK, here is classification job I am creating. I am setting some limits like timeout minutes, the maximum trials to be done. OK, and then I am setting uh, which kind of algorithm I want to block there. OK, so that information means whatever configuration we gave into that GUI, I am giving that configuration through uh, Python code here. OK, and then I will ask it to run the start the job. And when I start the job in the same way, it will create a number of models. OK, showing me the best performing model at the time. So this is a programmatic approach to do the same thing. OK, earlier we saw. GUI approach to do the same uh, to do the things, but now this is programmatic approach to do the same thing. OK, let me just check. Endpoints. Refresh. <clears throat> Provisioning state updating. Let me. Yeah. Scoring script auto generated. SKU given. Other configuration directors here. I will take you through a couple of uh, sample questions. OK, in the last uh, half an hour. OK, so that you will get idea what type of questions are asked in the examination. I have around 45 minutes to one hour in hand in which I will complete uh, part of designer as well as uh, notebooks and then I will take you to a couple of questions. OK. So observe here these notebooks. Now the code what is being shown here, okay, uh, has been taken from uh, GitHub repository. In case if you are MCD, and you will get access to this GitHub repository. Okay, and this is the code uh, with an explanation. Okay, now in the examination there will be questions based on the code also. And it is highly recommended for you to run each and every code before you go for uh, examination. Okay, and we will have a little bit deeper insight of this code. Okay, I have directly jumped to the sixth lab. Okay, only because to show to you sixth lab only because to show to you uh, that. You know, uh, working with auto ML is possible through SDK. It's possible through Python SDK. OK, in order to run this code, I will have to start the compute. OK, I, I think I already have started the compute. Okay, that I can select here. Nice. 
Okay. Oh. Okay, and I can put this code to run. It is still updating. Let me refresh it once. Provisioning state, it is still updating. So anyway, it takes a really long time to uh, deploy the model. It is a bit obvious that it takes around. Sometimes it may take 30 minutes. Sometimes it may take 45 minutes you know, to do the deployment. OK, I cannot wait for that much time. So let me take you to the another concept here and we will come back to this page. OK, uh, we will keep coming back to this page after some interval. OK, now it is time for me to take you to designer. Designer is another very interesting feature what they have introduced here in uh, Azure ML service. OK, and in Azure ML service. You know, we can create a uh, we can create ML pipeline. OK, so in order to create ML pipeline, you know, from here I can create. Empty pipeline to begin with. I already have created a couple of pipe pipelines for you, but before I show those pipelines to you, one more thing would like to bring to your notice that. Multiple sample examples they already have given. OK, and it is highly recommended for you to go through these sample examples first. OK. Uh, and then you go for designing your own pipeline. Let me take you to one of the already created pipeline, this one. OK, and let me uh, show you that pipeline. OK, and now in this pipeline, you just observe. I already have created this pipeline manually by dragging you know, these steps one by one here at this place. OK. So now here you see multiple sample data are available here. Multiple sample data are available. OK, but if you do not want to go with the sample data and you want to create your own data set, that is also possible from here. So you can create your own data set from here. OK, I think I already have created. Some data set. Here it is. I already have created some data set here. And in order to create this data set, I did follow the steps to be given here under this asset. Data asset. Now, what are all steps to follow here to create data set? You have to select the data source. You have to uh, you know give necessary secret information to connect to that data source like access key or chance token. You have to identify where the actual data file is existing in that data source. So you may have to, you know, navigate inside the container and folders and subfolders inside the container and pick up the file which you want to, you know, use to create a data set. Okay, those are the steps you will have to follow. And here I already have followed those steps and I have created a data set. But here I am going with already created a data set this month which I dragged here. OK, now let me see what type of data does it have. OK, so I double click that box of quotes and I can see. The data in that data set, so there are 205 rows and 26 columns. OK, and here are the different, different columns existing and out of these columns in all initial columns are you know, feature columns and the last column is the price column. In this data set, I may have to do the prediction of the price of the four wheeler automobile, you know, based on the physical parameters, like what is the make of that machine, or what is the make of that model, what is the fuel type, what is the aspiration, or how many doors are there, what is the body style, you know, and other physical parameters. 
okay i may use to predict the price of the vehicle okay here it is showing me the profile of the data and from the profile of the data i come to know you know there are parameters you know which are left uh, sorry right skewed okay so for this parameter i do not see uh, i do see a, a, a space for you know, increasing its quality okay so it is uh, the, the 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 histogram for that parameter is not bell shaped and that is you know one of the reasons i may have to apply uh, some uh, uh, qualitative measures on this column acha i think it has been updated end point update complete okay so end point has been completely updated and there now you see multiple uh, tags appearing so your deployment of the model has been done here i may go for the test okay and here is some data i will have to submit these are some columns and i will have to submit the data uh, in this uh, json and then i will have to click on the test and then it will show me the result it is it should have shown me some sample data here it is not showing me some sample data okay but in this json i will have to mention the uh, sample data here okay i will have to submit it as a part of this json okay anyway after i submit the data and i feel if i click on the test you know what is the whatever be the prediction that it will have to show me here in this area okay so thereby i can come to know uh, uh, whether model is in position to view, uh, do the prediction if i go to consume okay in the consume here you see rest endpoint is appearing and whoever is using this rest endpoint the user or end application if he is using this rest endpoint to interact with this model that end application will have to you now authenticate first using one of these primary keys so one of these keys either primary or secondary okay here they are giving you some code okay python code maybe c sharp or r code you know which you can directly use into your uh, python application okay and here in this python application the url is already given the key key should be uh, acha key they are not embedding key here okay we will have to mention a key here what your key they are giving that we will have to mention here okay and we will have to make an arrangement here to populate this data so your python application you should have an arrangement to populate this data okay and that's all so you simply make an arrangement to populate the data you copy paste the key here place that key here okay and you copy this code okay and run this code and you start uh, you get the prediction okay so it is very easy to you know uh, use uh, this consumer code in your python application if your python application is a web application then most probably you will accept these parameters from the web page and this code will go at the server side the client side will bring the parametric values and at the server side you should write the, you know uh, code python code to pick up those http values coming from the client side okay and populate those values here and once you do that this code runs at the server side and brings the prediction okay and that prediction you will get here into the request you will get that prediction into the request okay and here then you will have to write the code to consume that prediction so now this is server side code this prediction whatever it is bringing i say you can you will consume in two ways one is you you may log that prediction and another is you will put it in the http response okay and that prediction will reach back to the client side 
so that's how you know the, this code you will modify. OK, so this is uh, Python code. Here you will see C sharp code and here you will see R code. But that's how you know you will use that. Coming back to uh, designer, OK? You can keep putting your questions, if any. When I realize that I have received a question, I will try to answer then and there. OK, so here we have seen that we have got the data set here. OK, and here is the data profile. File for every column from the profile you will come to know if you select to a specific column, you will see a central tendency of the data. So here you will see a central tendency of the data. OK, and central tendency of the data will also give you. Uh, idea about what kind of fixation you know, your data may need. Now here it is, it is not showing me mean, median, max because I have selected the column which is not numeric. But if I select this, this column, the so engine size. Okay, there. You can see it is showing you central tendency. OK, so looking at the central tendency, you will decide whether you need some oversampling of the data, whether you will need some uh, normalization on the data. Sometimes, you know, whenever you see right, the data is uh, right skewed, you in case if you apply normalization there, you know, so normalization is one of the ways to you know, improve the quality of the data and you can see the profile of the data as uh, well shaped. OK, so what what exactly measure you want to take the, that you can decide by looking at the central tendency. Now you may be receiving all the columns. OK, but you do not want to take all the columns ahead. So which columns you may want to drop that also you can decide from here. So I am asking it to drop this specific column. OK, how do I add that column name here? So I may I, I might have clicked on edit column. OK, and here. I will uh, see the list of the columns, OK, and I may ask it to exclude that column. Include all the columns first and then I may ask it which column to exclude. Yes, so select column also can be mentioned here. Multiple such operations are available. Lots of such operations are available. Let me just take you. Just not going on. Sample data, OK. See, lots of such uh, options are available. So here, for example, I want to apply different transformations. Just a little. Where is the data input? Data transformation. Add columns, add rows, apply math operations. Apply math operations like. You know, I may want to apply some normalization on some column that I can do from here. I may want to add two columns to create a third column that is also possible. OK, these are different you know, uh, measures I can take to. Uh, replace the missing values. Here I am assuming that you are you know, already aware of these steps because in four hours you know, it is very difficult to cover all the things from the scratch. So different missing steps we can apply. Like in case if uh, there is a uh, categorical column, you know, in and if values are missing, with what value uh, we should replace a missing uh, values. Okay, so there may be different uh, kind of mode like uh, uh, operations we may have to do, mode like measures we may have to do. In case if it is a discrete column, uh, then we may be applying uh, replacing missing values. Mean values. OK, uh, so. 
there are different measures we can apply here to uh, clean the missing values. OK. Yes, I can do joining of the two tables in case if I am receiving the data from uh, or two data sources, so we can apply joining also like a table joining. OK. Uh, normalization of the data, partition and sampling of the data. Okay, remove duplicate rules. Multiple such operations are available and it is really rich in offering you different transformation measures. OK, clean missing data. Now, why do we need a splitting of the data? OK, so now once we got the data, what we will do is we will divide that data into two parts. OK, I think I have received one question. Let me just check. OK, it is a feedback form. Chaitali has shared a feedback link with you. OK, uh, feedbacks are very important for us. We will request you to fill the feedback form before you leave the session. OK. So in case if you are already from the machine learning background, you know we split the complete data set into two parts. Mostly 80% of uh, data we take into uh, training part and remaining 20% we take into testing part. OK, so here I have asked it to split the data and here I am asking it to do the splitting as a 70 to 30. 70% for training and 30% for Testing. Randomize the split. OK, random seed. That that is can be specified and stratified split that is also allowed. Uh, multiple you know, configurations can be given here in the split data. OK, so 80% data will come to this point. And that is for the training purpose. And 20% data will come to another point that is for the testing purpose. Now, these machine learning models, and here in you know artificial intelligence, every model must be trained. Every model. So in deep learning, you have to train the model. In machine learning, you have to train the models. In cognitive services, you have to train the model. Okay, so training and testing. These are unavoidable steps to carry in artificial intelligence. So on every model, you have to do this. Huh. OK, so here I am asking you to give me the algorithm boosted decision tree regression. OK, I am working with the two algorithms here. This is decision forest regression. OK, now whenever I submit. This algorithm. OK, I double click. To this algorithm, I have to set some hyperparameters. OK, so maximum number of leaves per tree. All these are the hyperparameters I'm submitting. OK, every type of algorithm has its own set of hyperparameters. So the set of hyperparameters, what you can see for decision tree regression here, that will be different than decision forest regression. For a decision forest, the set will be different. I think I have received one message. Yes. Uh. <laughs> <coughs> okay. In Python, there are statements to set the hyperparameters. OK, and here through GUI, we can set the hyperparameters. So this is the submission of the algorithm. This is the submission of the train data, the data meant for training. And here actually we are training the model. So this model is nothing but trained model is nothing but 
a matured algorithm. This is immatured algorithm, and now this is matured algorithm. What do you mean by submitting the data? So submitting the data means actually submitting the experience to that model. And thereby you have got that matured uh, algorithm. And this algorithm or this model is now ready for doing the predictions for you. OK, so hereby I am submitting the matured algorithm. Hereby I am submitting the test data to it. And now here it will on the test data, it will do its own predictions. On the test data, it will do its own predictions. OK, and it will match the predictions with the historical results. Like here, our data is. Predicting the price of the. Uh, cars. OK, so here what it will do on the test data, it will predict the prices of the car, which it will match with the actual price of the car. And whenever it compares predicted price of the car with the actual price of the car, there it can calculate a variance. How much your prediction is different than actual price of the car. And thereby, if variance is more definitely. Accuracy is less. So here it calculates the accuracy. So on this model, it calculates the accuracy. On this model, it calculates the accuracy. And here we can compare those accuracies. So here I can compare those accuracies okay, to identify which model is better performing. And again, you know, I can see uh, and what I can do is, you know, if I identify that model one is better performing, model two anyway, I will remove from this pipeline. Model two I will remove from this pipeline. Okay, and then I will submit that pipeline for the purpose of uh, creating real point endpoints and for the purpose of the deployment. So the same step what we followed while going with the auto ML, you know, those similar steps I can follow from here. OK, and I can see that model. Into the list of model registries, I can see the endpoints on that model. And again, in uh, looking into the endpoint of that model, I can see the script of that model. OK, which I can embed into my web application. You know, or in any other application where I need the predictions to be done. OK, and thereby I can enrich any normal application or web application with a feature of the prediction. OK. So that's how you know here we will create a designer data pipeline. OK, and similar steps of uh, registration of the model, identifying the best performing model, then registration of the model, and then creating a real endpoints for the model and deployment of the model. All those things you can get over here. In the center. What are all different models available here? So there, these of the models you can see. Who state decision tree? So for regression, there are six models available. Posted decision tree, decision forest regression, fast forest, quantile regression, linear regression, neural network regression. OK, and poisons regression. Clustering for clustering, there is one uh, model as of now available, k-means cluster. For classification, there are 12 models available. OK, so. A rich uh, kind of you know models are available here. One more thing I would like to bring to your notice is about customization. You know, there are again two things available here under customization. I already have shown you the list of around 19 models. But if you want to bring your own model, that is also possible. So from here you can bring your own model. OK, so maybe there is an algorithm you know, which is not being supported by this uh, designer. You know. 
that algorithm you can bring here. OK, that not only that thing, if you want to do customization and transformation, that also you can do from here. And you can you know, submit your own Python script here. And that will be executed in the pipeline. And it takes the raw data. It will apply you know, what your. Your specific need of the transformation, OK, and it will apply that transformation and you will get the transformed data. So that is also possible. So here it allows you one, one such a level of the customization, okay, through these things. It allows you customization. Although it has given you, you know, different measures of feature selection, statistical functions, it has given you different uh, ways, Okay. Model training. Train model. Okay. PyTorch model. You model hyperparameter that is also possible. Okay. So many such options are available there. Okay, which are making uh, this particular option, designer option, very powerful. Okay, and may not be full played the customization, but Critical customization, you know, they are making possible here. Yeah, they are making that customization possible. OK, I think uh, it is a high time for us to go for the last uh, uh, discussion. Last discussion means the, the last feature of uh, Azure ML service and it is notebooks. So hereby I am going to the notebooks, but in the meantime, let me do one thing. Uh, let me shut down the computes because you know, computers may be increasing my bill. So I will shut down those computes which I don't need. OK, this compute I will need uh, for running the steps in the notebook. OK, so this compute let me start. OK, so let me select it and let me start this compute and other computes let me shut down. So this is the cluster. I don't need it now. So I will delete it. Now there is no arrangement to stop the cluster. I will have to delete it or I will have to create a new. So let me delete it. OK, is there any Kubernetes cluster available? Attached to compute, nothing else. OK, compute cluster I already have started deleting. And here is the compute instance. Okay, compute instance is for notebook development. I can open a notebook from here after it is started, or otherwise I can go into the notebook and from here also I can see the code or I can develop the code. So I go to the notebook now. Yes. And then let me take you to the tour of some of the codes here. OK, so let me take you to the tour. So one by one. Okay, here is the compute. It is provisioning. Remember that compute we need to run this code. See the Jupyter notebook is only. Now this is not a Jupyter notebook. OK, but this is I think something like Monaco. But it is only for the development purpose. OK, only for writing the commands. You need to run those commands somewhere. And for that purpose, this notebook you have to assign to. You have to assign that notebook to. Machine learning server. Let me go. To, uh, OK, I will. Attach this notebook to. Compute instance. Okay, and it has started one serverless compute also. I will have to terminate, otherwise it will keep incurring cost on me. OK, 
it's that serverless compute. If that is something new appearing here. I will have to search for it and I will have to stop it. Otherwise, it will keep incurring cost on me. Okay, changing to Synapse Park 2. This is under preview. We'll stop the current kernel on compute instance and halt any notebook execution. Yes, let me terminate it first. So it is in preview. Okay, I don't want to start it. Fine. I don't want to start it. I do not want to start it. Somewhere it has started, I think, and it hasn't given me any interface to shut it down. Or even if it has given, I will have to search where should I or where there is a way to shut it down. OK, OK, I have connected it to the compute that uh, we have created. I have started. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, collapse this. OK, from here I can collapse this column. So I will get a wider screen. OK, now let us have a look at uh, uh, some of the scripts. Yes, and uh, you know what they have done is they have introduced Python SDK. They have done Python SDK. OK, they have given you. Different types of SDKs. The list of the SDKs what they have given you can get it from here. So there is a R SDK available. OK, in Python, PyTorch and TensorFlow OK, SDK with Azure ML SDK, those are available. I want to go with Azure ML SDK, so that's what I have selected here. But otherwise, if you want to do PyTorch and TensorFlow development from here, that is also possible. Okay, I go with Azure ML SDK. OK, I want to see what kind of version of Azure ML SDK it has you know, uh, implemented, uh, deployed here installed here okay that i can see so i am putting that command to run and now what it is doing is okay i can see it's a version is 1.5.0 okay so it means azure uh, ai ml sdk is available here okay now the next thing is connecting to the workspace remember all the artifacts are inside is uh, workspace and it is essential to connect to the workspace if you want to run any command on the workspace what kind of commands you can run on the workspace you know that i will let you know as we will move ahead okay but very first thing is to connect to the workspace here is my subscription id here is a, a results group and here is a workspace name i am putting this code to run okay and thereby it is just a way to declare three Python variables. I will use these variables uh, in the later part. OK, so here I am using those variables. To the ML client object. And what is this ML client object? I can interact with the Azure, sorry, ML workspace through ML client object. If you are from earlier background of ML service. There you did not see ML client. Because you did use different classes. Workplace class to interact with the workplace. Compute class to interact with the compute. Data store class to interact with the data store and data set class to interact with the data set. There you use the different classes to interact with the different artifacts on the workspace. But now what they have done, they have given you one and a single class to interact with all artifacts 
So you don't have to use multiple classes here. OK, so they have simplified this API by providing you one entry point. One connection point to access all artifacts from. Uh, workspace. OK, so let me put this command to run. But I will get a reference to ML client. So here I have got a reference to ML client. OK. And now here we will create. Just give me two, three minutes. I'm feeling uh, thirsty and I will have to come back. So just give me two, three minutes. Or, uh, let us come back within five minutes. OK, and we will resume our schedule by 705. <coughs> I will take you through this course, but just give me five minutes, say, I to come back as I am feeling thirsty.
Okay. So coming back. Here is one script I have written. It is a Python script. Okay, in which we are doing necessary imports. And then uh, here we are asking it to read the CSV file. This CSV file has been updated, uh, sorry, uploaded. run training script. We will have to upload it. That's a CSV file somewhere here. OK, so here it has been uploaded. OK, and what actually we are asking it to do with this command that do not run this comma Python commands, but to create Python file, Python code file of this command of these commands. OK, so here from this CSV file, we are asking it to uh, select some of the columns as a uh, feature columns and then there are some of the columns here, uh, one column as a label column. So that is also what we are asking it to do. Then here we are asking through the code to do the splitting of the data. I already brought to your notice one of the splitting data box, which we added, which we saw in case of a designer pipeline. And there we gave 70% uh, for test uh, training data and 30% for testing data, the same. And submitting here so 30% for testing data. So obviously 70% will be for testing data. Hyperparameter setting we are doing here through code. Logistic regression is one of the classification algorithm. <coughs> because here this is an example of uh, you know whether a patient is diabetic or not. It is an example of classification. So logistic regression, though the name or word a regression appears in its name. Actually, it is for classification. OK, so hyperparameters I am submitting there and there then I am submitting the training data and to the left side I am getting a trained model. On that trained model here, we are applying some predictions of test data and hereby we are calculating the accuracy. Hereby we are calculating other uh, uh, ROC parameters. Oh, AUC area under curve parameters to calculate the accuracy. <coughs> different functions are available there to calculate different kinds of uh, you know, performance parameters. So if we want to call recall, if we want to call precision, if we want to uh, get the performance parameter on false negative, false positive, you know, the different parameters are available. OK, and different functions are available thereby. So this particular code will be written into this file only. It will be written into this file only. I don't know whether I am putting this code to run. OK, I think I am putting this code to run. OK, so let me put this code also to run. OK, before I put it to run, let me just delete this pi file. OK, so that we will come to know whether this code has created that Python file again. Python file has been deleted. OK. 
and now I am asking you to create that Python file inside SRC folder. So inside SRC folder, I will ask it to create a Python file. Click it to run. Yes, and if I refresh it, and if I go inside SRC folder, that Python file has again been created. Okay. Another step is to create a job. Now, these are important steps. Okay. What we have done up till now, let us try to understand that we have written the Python steps here and created a model and tested the model and say what I will say, uh, printed the accuracy and AUC of the model. Now what, how are we creating the job? So this is the, there are three types of jobs to be created in a later code discussion of those three types uh, will come to, you will come to know. Okay, command jobs. Okay, so hereby I am asking you to run that Python script. Where is that script existing? It is existing inside the SRC folder. What kind of environment I want it to use to run that script. Now, here you see there are two types of environments. There are two types of environments, and those environments you can see under the head environments. I can show you those environments in the, the next uh, tab. Okay, here you can see curated environments and custom environments. There are many curated environments. They have created for us. Curated environments, they already have created for us. OK, and here you will observe. See the environment names are beginning with the word Azure ML. These are all GPU environments and then there are ML environments also. options. OK, as you are able. Uh, so these are ready environments they have created. What are all things available under these environments? Those you can see here under the tags. OK, so GPU, CUDA, Ubuntu, OK, like environments are available there. These are a couple of deep learning environments. Okay. The regression, like GBM regression, regression, clustering. Okay, so multiple such environments are available there. Okay, and those environments, one of those environments I'm mentioning here is Keta. One of those environments I'm mentioning here. Okay, I wanted to refer to AML cluster. ML cluster is one more compute, and we will have to create that uh, compute. Okay, what will be the display name and experiment name? All those things are appearing here. Okay, so as ML cluster. Okay. Okay, and then I can ask it to run this job on that ML cluster. So I will have to create a ML cluster also inside the compute. You know, here it will have to create a ML cluster. As of now, it is not existing. OK, but I can explicitly ask it to create that cluster. A ML cluster. OK, and here is a way. This is a way to create a job object only. And here I am asking it to create the job. OK, and from here we can monitor the job also. This output menu, let me clear first. OK, and then let me put it to run. OK, what it will do? It will create a job object. Uh, sorry, it will it will create a configuration of the job object. It will create a job object here. OK, and it will start the execution of the job object from here. I am putting this command to run.
OK, and I think I will have to create. What is error now it is showing? Email cluster. I will have to create email cluster here. OK, then only I will be able to run this command. OK, email cluster that I can create explicitly from here. Compute cluster creating plus new. I will name it as email cluster. OK, dedicated CPU. OK, uh, standard ESV. OK, clicking on the next. AML cluster. Number of nodes may be two. Maximum number of nodes also may be two. OK, and thereby I can ask it to create the AML cluster. So I'm clicking on create. It will create that AML cluster. OK, and that name then I will have to mention here. OK, whatever name I give to that cluster, that name I will have to mention here. OK, and then I can put it to run. So I think cluster is being created. Provisioning succeeded. It means it is done perhaps. No. OK, now it will create two nodes there. So I have asked it to. Now this creating two nodes will take a little bit more time. OK, and then we will have to put this. Uh, notebook to run. OK. The point what I want to bring to your notice is this is how you know you will write your commands in this notebook. OK, and you will. Run those commands. What are all other notebooks available here? OK, let me just see. It will take some time. But what are all other notebooks available here? So how do we work with the data? And there you will see the commands to create. So again, I am getting a reference to the workspace in the same way I'm getting a reference to the workspace. Here is a command to list. See on ML client, I will uh, submit a command to list all data stores. So here is the command to list all data stores. If I want to create a new data store through the command, that is also possible. So I will submit necessary information and I will ask it to create new data store. So that is also possible. OK, if I want to create a data set. I can ask it to you know, create a data set here. OK, so we can programmatically ask it to create a data set. Uh, multiple such commands are available. OK, then here you can see working with the computes. Through the Python code, I can ask it to create the compute. So I would have asked it to create the AML cluster you know, through the compute. See here, I can ask it to create AML cluster through the compute. Again, I will have to submit minimum instances, maximum instances and other information, and then it will create a compute for me. OK, I think by this time my compute. Is up and ready and I can show you execution of this code. OK, now I put this code to run and now most probably it will not encounter. Error. Yes, it is. It hasn't encountered error. OK, it is asking me to monitor the job. Progress of job by clicking over here. OK, if I click over here, you know, it will show me. The progress of that job and how much it has progressed in creating that model. That also I can see. So as of now, you know, uh, the job is under execution. Okay, it is still running. <clears throat> yes, and it is still running that job. Going back to the other notebooks. Okay. So 
is still running. Uh, okay, so the point is, this is the way we can write a different code and, and work with it. Okay, furthermore, there are models. I can create automated ML here. Okay, then I can uh, track the model with ML. Okay, multiple codes are available here and my recommendation will be, you please run each and every code before you go for the examination. ML flow. ML flow is a kind of a pipeline to be created. Okay, and we have created multiple jobs here. OK, so in that one pipeline, we will declare multiple jobs. OK, and those jobs will be reusable in this pipeline and those jobs can be uh, executed whenever you are triggering the execution of the pipeline. So here you will see multiple uh, Python code uh, written. OK, and how do we create a pipeline? How do we create ML flow? You know, those are being uh, covered here in this. Uh, uh, in this uh, in this lab. OK, so multiple such codes you will have to work with before you go for the examination. It is the time for me now to go back to. Uh, some specimen. Uh, questions for the examination. Before I go ahead. Better I should shut down all computes as they will keep incurring a cost for me. OK, so I go to the compute. OK, this compute let me stop now. And then I go to the compute cluster. ML cluster let me delete now. Any other cluster if is opened here, let me delete all them. OK, so thereby they will stop incurring a cost on me. And now we will go to a couple of questions. I cannot take you through all the code here because of uh, you know paucity of the time. But but how do you look at the code that I try to you know bring to your understanding in short span of time? OK. So get up and ready. Uh, for answering some of the questions. So the first question is in front of you. What kind of compute do you need? Uh, for deep learning or DLMV? Data science virtual machine and deep learning virtual machine. There are two virtual machines available. Data science virtual machine is well equipped with everything that is needed for uh, machine learning. And deep learning virtual machine is uh, you know, equipped with GPU, GPU drivers, and all uh, tools those are needed to work with uh, deep learning. So those virtual machines are called as a DL. PM. I already have given you answer while doing the explanation while giving this explanation. I think somebody has given me answer. Let me just check. <coughs> yes, you are right. Absolutely right. The answer is GPU. And let me show you the answer. So GPU is the correct answer. SSD is a solid state drive where you store the data. It is not for compute. FPGA is for compute, but FPGA is for each compute, I think, if I am able to recall correctly. It is for each compute. Okay, and deep learning virtual machine has a graphics processing unit. Okay, it is GPA. 
Power BI is for visualization. It is not for any computer. Okay, let me go ahead. Yes. Read the question carefully and answer it. <clears throat> These are different packages available. Rattle, TensorFlow, Tiano, Chainer. You should have, you know, top view of for what these top uh, these packages are. You have been asked. You have been tasked with designing a deep learning model which accommodates most recent edition of Python to recognize language. To recognize language means it is a problem of natural language processing. So you should have some understanding of uh, natural language processing, image processing, and what what level of understanding do you need here for this examination? Now, at least in which scenario, which one to use? Like if it is a CCTV footage, and in CCTV footage, you want to identify the objects. Then it is the image processing or video processing. If you want to convert the text of one language into another language, it is natural language processing. You want to identify which language the speaker is speaking in. It is natural language processing. We call it the language detection. OK, so you should be aware of different uh, scenarios and which tool to use for that. Alexa, you give some command to Alexa and that Alexa works on that command. That is called as a language understanding. That is again a part of deep learning. Chatbot. That is again a part of deep learning. OK. Answer to the question here is what is Rattle? What is TensorFlow? What is Tiano? And what is Chainer? So TensorFlow is the correct answer here. Because for natural language processing, TensorFlow is a library available. Rattle is a package written in C for GUI based management of data mining. Not for language, natural language processing, it is for data mining. Tiano is a Python library for working with ML related mathematical expressions. The purpose of Tiano is entirely different and far away from natural language processing. Chainer is a framework for neural network. It is a framework for neural network. Okay, at the top of it, your natural language processing may run, may run. OK, but Chainer is not ex explicitly for natural language processing. And that's why the correct answer is tensor. Next question. You have you are developing deep learning models to analyze the semi structured, unstructured, and structured data types. You have following data available for model building video recordings, transcripts of radio commentary about events, logs from related social media feeds. You need to select the environment for creating the model. Now, here let us see one by one. I am going from bottom. Machine Learning Studio. Machine Learning Studio allows me to create a machine learning models. OK. Which machine learning models? Machine learning models for prediction. So you will submit uh, physical parameters of the car and it will predict the price. You will submit uh, pathological uh, data for the patient and it will predict whether that patient 
will acquire uh, diabetes. Okay, what it cannot do is to identify objects in video recordings, to create a transcript of radio commentary. That is not possible in machine learning. Okay, uh, to do sentiment analysis captured during sporting events, logs from related social media feeds capturing uh, captured during uh, sporting events. Okay, that is not also also possible in Spark ML Lib, not possible in Data Lake Analytics. Okay, it is possible in cognitive services. Remember, Azure is promoting cognitive services because you know it is a very hot uh, service as of today. And it is being clubbed with Azure OpenAI also. Okay, so there is a very much buzz as on today in the market about cognitive services. And that's why I do expect some of the questions on cognitive services, though this examination is mainly on Azure ML. Okay, so do accept some of the questions on cognitive services. Okay, next question. I think I have got some. Azure AI and cognitive service. Cognitive service offers you Azure AI. So Azure AI is under umbrella term under which you will see cognitive service. There are other services in Azure AI under Azure AI. Okay, Azure Open AI is under Azure AI. Azure ML service is under Azure AI. Azure Cognitive Services under Azure AI. So Azure AI is an umbrella term. Now let us come to a little bit difficult question. Okay, go through it. You must store data in Azure block storage to support Azure machine learning. You need to transfer data into Azure block storage. So maybe from on premise, you want to upload a data to Azure block storage. What are all different ways available? So you should also be aware of uh, what are all you know migration uh, data migration. Uh, alternatives are available. Okay, for migrating the data needed for Azure ML uh, service. And let me show you the answer here. BCD, AZ copy is available to upload the data by using Python script also. You can upload on premise data into uh, 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 blob storage. And by using Azure Storage Explorer, you can do that thing. Why option A is not there? Bulk insert SQL query. Bulk insert SQL query can you know insert the data into relational database management system or data warehouses. Bulk copy program. Bulk copy program is used to split very large data files into smaller data files. Okay, it is not for uploading the data, but it is for you know making the data ready for bulk copy by splitting very large files into smaller files so that you know these smaller files can be parallelly uploaded. Large file cannot be parallelly uploaded. Small files can be parallelly uploaded. So you need a tool to Split large files into small files, and there you will use the BCP. Using SSIS also, you can transfer the data. Okay, let me just share this link with you for more uh, exploration. Okay. So I'm going to the next question now.
OK. So I think I have got one answer. Let me just verify. Answer B. Tensor flow. Let me just check why other op options are not uh, applicable here or cannot uh, should not be correct here. You need to recommend a deep learning framework uh, for speech recognition to include in the data science virtual machine. Rattle we already have seen it is for uh, data mining in our language. Weka is in Java for machine learning. Scikit learn is for machine learning. OK, in Python. None of these options except the TensorFlow is for speech recognition. TensorFlow can do speech recognition. Let me just check the correct answer. And the correct answer is TensorFlow. Viveka is for machine learning in Java. Scikit-learn is for machine learning in Python. And Rattle is uh, our framework for data mining. Let me go to the next question. Build DNN models. Who can build DNN models? Enable interactive data exploration and visualization. Who can do data exploration and visualization? These two options we want to perform. Which tool you can map here? What you have to do in the examination, you have to drag the. Uh, so here are the match the pairs. You have to drag the appropriate option and drop it here in this box. Um, OK. So let me show you the correct answers. I think I have got some message on correct answers. Let me just check. T and A. T is cognitive toolkit. And A. I think A is not correct one. In order to do Visualization and interactive data exploration. We have Power BI desktop for that purpose. So your T is correct. But the second option is Power BI desktop. Let me just check. Other. OK, OK, yes, yes. So let me show you the correct answers. So you should have, you know, detailed knowledge about Power BI desktop also because you know it is a part of the data analysis and uh, visualization is very important part in data analysis. OK, so you should be. Uh, aware of little bit aware of even Power BI desktop also. OK, so those are the two correct answers. I'm going to the next question. So you should have little more knowledge about you know types of the uh, virtual machines available there. OK, so. What is the purpose of the D series? What is the purpose of the E series? What is the purpose of the N series? You know that also you should be aware of. OK, in the answer, I think there is a URL which I will share with you. OK, so you can get more information about the virtual machines if you refer to that URL. OK, and here what it is asking me to do is. It wants to do deep learning. OK, and it is asking me. Uh, you must use CUDA based uh, model training. OK, you need to provision the compute instance. So which kind of machine you will use select here? OK, so. What are all the machines which are supporting GPU? Those machines we will have to select here. Because in those machines we will get, you know, GPU drivers, and those machines are well equipped with a GPU related hardware also. Okay, so the actual answer here is I am not getting any answer from you. Okay, but so let me disclose the answer that N series machines are equipped with a GPU. So correct answer here is N C series machines. Let me select that URL, which you you will uh, it will help you to explore further more on 
types of the machines. Let me go to the next uh, module. Yes, more on the workspaces. <clears throat> okay. So, NB server, AKS cluster, and machine learning compute. Okay, so this machine learning compute is nothing but a uh, compute cluster we normally talk about. Okay, this is a compute inference, inference cluster, and this is uh, for notebook. Okay, running the notebook. Run Azure machine learning designer training pipeline and deploy a web service from machine learning designer. Remember for deployment, if you recall, we use the compute, sorry, Kubernetes cluster. And for run, running machine learning designer training pipeline, if you recall, I brought to your notice about uh, machine learning compute or uh, compute cluster. Okay, so those should be the correct answer, but let me see somebody has given the answer. Okay, C and B. Uh, Rishikesh Pandey, C and B. So C, yes, correct, and B, yes, correct. Both the answers are correct. Let me show you actual answer. So ML offers compute cluster, that is C, okay, and Kubernetes cluster, that is B. So your answers are correct. Let me do one thing. Uh, let me show, uh, share this URL to get more information about it. But your answers are correct. It is time for us to go to the next question now. And here is next question in front of you. I agree that this question needs some changes in the word, but still let me check whether somebody can give us correct answer. C, container service, correct. Container service and Kubernetes uh, service. These two are the options available here. Container service and Kubernetes service. These two options are available here. Okay, in earlier question, they did expect us to choose for Kubernetes service. Here, you know, they are giving us option for container service. Okay, and the correct answer is container service. Okay, how to deploy and where? You know, let me share this URL with you so that you can explore it further. Next question now. <clears throat> you have one lakh photographs of birds. All photographs use JPG format and are stored in blob container. You need to access bird photograph files in the blob container from Azure Machine Learning Service workspace that will be used for deep learning model training. You must minimize data movement. What should you do? 
create an Azure Data Lake store and move world photographs to the store. Create an as Cosmos DB. Create a regis and register a data set by using tabular data set uh, class that references blob storage. Register blob storage containing bird photographs as a data store in Azure Machine Learning. Copy the bird photographs to the blob store and that was created by your Azure Machine Learning Service workplace. <laughs> So I have got some answer. Let me just check. Is it correct or not? D or E. I think you are very near to the uh, answer. Rishikesh. OK, and the correct answer should be D. Copy the bird photographs to the blog story that was created with your as your that is E is not recommended. Let me tell you the reason why the correct answer is B and B only. Sorry, D and D only. Transfer of the data incurs fast. Workspace storage is not recommended to store the photographs. It is because workspace storage basically is for, you know, uh, as your ML uh, to store artifacts. And it is not for storing your data. You should have your data in the separate workspace, uh, in the separate block storage. OK, and that is the reason why I will always recommend to go with the option D. OK. Register Azure block storage as data store in Azure ML. But avoid going with a block storage that is, you know, uh, created while creating the workspace. Because that is that should be dedicated you know, for all the artifacts uh, Azure ML service create. OK, and it should not be used for your data. And if you try to use it for your data, it may be possible that, you know, if you upload your data, OK, um, your workspace may run out of space for storing uh, its own artifacts. And that's why it should be avoided. Next uh, topic. The last question here, and then I will uh, uh, hand over uh, this session to uh, Chaitani, okay, for further discussion. The last question. You need to select Azure Machine Learning Studio module to improve the classification accuracy. Okay, which module should you use? Your data set is imbalanced. This is very important uh, statement you know, to arrive to the correct answer here. Rishikesh says answer D. Smart. Uh, permutation feature importance, filter based feature selection. Feature based filter selection anyway will not help you to uh, fix the problem of imbalanced data. Linear discriminated analysis also will not help you to fix this problem. What is the purpose of the SMART? Purpose of the SMART is used to balance the Im imbalanced data. So the answer D should be correct. And I think uh, Rishikesh has given the correct answer. Okay, more on this. I am sharing this link with you so that you will explore more on smart. OK, so that's all from my side. You know, uh, we did have, you know, uh, look at a couple of uh, types of questions. OK, and uh, uh, what all other things we did uh, here is, you know, we understood what type of examination it is, what are all do's and don'ts for the examination, and then we took an overview of different services in Azure ML service. So there we saw how can we work with Auto ML. We see, we did see some of the important aspects in Auto ML, some of the important as aspects in Designer, and important aspects in uh, SDK. Okay, so and in addition to that, then we had a look at 
10 15 questions okay uh, so also we have, have understood from where we will prepare for the examination so what are all stuff available on ms learn you know, that also i brought to your notice you know, how do you get a different intimations information about more information about the examination and, uh, that also i try to i try to bring to your notice and that's all from my side i have tried my best to bring as many things as i can within the short span of time of around uh, three and a half hours okay so over to chaitali now okay let me just share yes sir thank you so much Yes, yes, guys, I have shared the feedback form in the chat box. Please submit the feedback form. I request each and every participant to make sure you submit the feedback form before dropping the call. I will wait for five minutes. Make sure you submit the feedback form before dropping. Thank you. <laughs> 